Negation Karma. Carol Malone curses cunning couple Harry and Meghan for dirty actions with Pier Morgan. I wonder if there's anything in Prince Harry's befuddled mind that isn't the fault of what he calls the news media. Pestilence, famine, his mother's death, climate change, the fact he can't get Marmite in California? Okay I made that one up. Now he's claiming the news media has contributed to mass-scale misinformation and lies about the vaccine and created vaccine hesitancy. Sorry, but that is hysterical, uninformed tosh. If this idiot ever read the news he'd know the media has been vociferously pro the vaccine. What hasn't is social media where for months a deranged cabal of conspiracy theorists have been screaming about the government, together with Bill Gates, using the vaccines to implant microchips into our brains. They're also claiming it makes people magnetic, causes autism, and is made from fetal tissue. Yabba, yabba. But Thicky Harry clearly doesn't know the difference between social and news media which became obvious at GQ's Men of the Year Awards this week where he made the confused claim that the news media had been peddling mass misinformation and lies about the vaccine. Prince Harry's impassioned speech at the 2021 British GQ Men of Year Awards Wednesday. British GQ held its 24th annual Men of the Year Awards in London, England, and there was no shortage of style and swagger on the red carpet. Bridget and star Reg Jean Page was among those honoured, recognised for standout performance for his role in the Netflix drama produced by Shandaland. Kingsley Benadire was also acknowledged as the boss breakthrough actor for his portrayals of Malcolm X in One Night in Miami and Barack Obama in The Comey Rule. The OG of actors, Sir Anthony Hopkins, was also presented with the Legend Award. With the current state of events in the world, it was nice to see so many talented men in fellowship with one another on the red carpet. And we can't lie and say the eye candy didn't make the scene all the more sweeter. Scroll through to see all the fellas who stepped out below. During his surprise virtual appearance at the awards show, the Duke of Sussex called on governments to tackle the huge disparity in access to COVID-19 vaccines worldwide and blamed mass-scale misinformation for vaccine hesitancy. Where you're born should not affect your ability to survive, when the drugs and know-how exist to keep you alive and well, Prince Harry was quoted as saying by ABC News. He also said, until every community can access the vaccine, and until every community is connected to trustworthy information about the vaccine, then we are all at risk. Of course none of this is to do with the vaccine, it's all about Harry's paranoid, unrelenting hatred of the media which he despises, in part, because it sees him and Meghan for what they are. Because it dares to question their so-called truths and calls out their towering hypocrisy dash like when supposed eco-warrior Harry recently took a private jet from a polo match in Aspen back to his home in Santa Barbara which would easily have emitted 10 tons of CO2. But, hey, we should know by now Harry's climate change mantra has always been don't do what I do, do what I tell you to do. He and Meghan hate the news media because its journalists behave like actual journalists and not the fawning PR lackeys they want them to be. The news media doesn't just swallow every outlandish, hurtful claim he and Meghan make. The pair of them have made a career and many millions out of taking vile pat shots at the royal family while playing professional victims whining about their hellish treatment at the hands of the Windsors. And that's why Ofcom's decision this week, which completely exonerated Piers Morgan for saying he didn't believe a word of what they said in that Oprah interview, wasn't just an embarrassing smack in the face for this self-righteous pair dash it's also a big wake-up call for them. The ex-Good Morning Britain host said he didn't believe what Meghan said in her Oprah Winfrey interview in March. The Duchess herself filed complaints with the regulator and ITV. Ofcom said restricting his views would be a chilling restriction on free expression but criticized his apparent disregard for the subject of suicide. Morgan said he was delighted with the ruling, which he described as a resounding victory for free speech and a resounding defeat for Princess Pinocchio's. Speaking outside his home, the 56-year-old journalist said he wasn't really sure why I lost my job in the first place. He said Ofcom had emphatically endorsed my right to not believe what the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were saying. Ofcom said its decision was finely balanced, 
but that ITV had provided adequate protection to viewers from potentially harmful and highly offensive statements about mental health and suicide. The 57,793 complaints, the highest in Ofcom's 18-year history, related to Good Morning Britain on 8 and 9 March, the mornings before and after the Oprah interview with Meghan and Harry was broadcast in the UK. In the in-depth interview, the Duchess revealed her mental health became so bad she didn't want to be alive anymore, that she did not receive the help she asked for from Buckingham Palace, and that an unnamed member of the royal family had queried how dark their son Archie's skin might be. The following day, Morgan said he did not believe a word she said, that he wouldn't believe it if she read me a weather report, and the fact that she's fired up this onslaught against our royal family I think is contemptible. He briefly walked off the program after clashing with weather presenter Alex Beresford, and was later criticized by mental health charity Mind. His departure from the show after six often confrontational and controversial years was announced that evening. Morgan later conceded that it was not for me to question if she felt suicidal, but has defended his right to be allowed to have an opinion. He has continued to refer to her as Princess Pinocchio and was recently nominated for the National Television Award for Best TV Presenter. Until now they've operated safe in the knowledge that anyone who dared criticize them was silenced but not before being slated as a racist, a sexist or both. We weren't allowed to probe their so-called truths, many of which have proved to be untrue. But this Ofcom ruling sets a precedent. It means we're now entitled to say we don't believe everything they spout, which isn't just a victory for free speech but for common sense as well. Why should Meghan and Harry be entitled to free speech while the rest of us are not? It also means Has and Megs might now have to provide evidence, hard facts, for some of their devastating accusations about the royals. And maybe they'll now think twice about abusing their power by contacting the bosses of people who've upset them and demanding they be sacked, which Meghan did over Piers Morgan. Ofcom said, consistent with freedom of expression, Mr Morgan was entitled to say he disbelieved the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's allegations and to hold and express strong views that rigorously challenged their account. The, Ofcom Broadcasting, Code allows for individuals to express strongly held and robustly argued views, including those that are potentially harmful or highly offensive, and for broadcasters to include these in their programming. The restriction of such views would, in our view, be an unwarranted and chilling restriction on freedom of expression both of the broadcaster and the audience. However, the regulator said it had concerns over his comments about suicide and mental health. We were particularly concerned about Mr Morgan's approach to such an important and serious issue and his apparent disregard for the seriousness of anyone expressing suicidal thoughts, it said. Ofcom would have been seriously concerned if he had not been challenged by co-hosts Susanna Reid and Chris Ship, which provided adequate protection for viewers, it added. Morgan didn't refer to that part of Ofcom's report in a column about the ruling for the mail, saying the overall decision came down to an unequivocal and emphatic endorsement of my right to an opinion. He wrote, It was preposterous that I had to leave a job I loved because I didn't believe a demonstrable liar. But it happened because the corporate world has been cowed into surrendering to the woke mob whenever it pays for blood. Speaking later, he added, the conclusion says I was entitled to not believe them. And by the way you're all entitled to not believe me. ITV said it was Morgan's decision to leave GMB and it has no plans to invite him back to the program, but it will keep working with him on his Life Stories series. The broadcaster welcomed Ofcom's decision. The ruling sets out clearly that it was the balance and context the program makers provided which was key in mitigating against the potential for harm and offense which could have been caused by Piers Morgan's comments, it said in a statement. It is because of the program's editorial decisions and the opposing views which were forcefully expressed by other presenters and guests, that the program did not breach Ofcom's rules. The Duchess has not commented on the ruling. Ofcom's report added, while we acknowledged that Mr Morgan's questions about the nature of racism had the potential to be highly offensive to some viewers, the conversations about race and racism in this program provided open debate on the issues raised by the interview.
We also considered that the program allowed for an important discussion to be had on the nature and impact of racism. ITV had clearly anticipated that racial issues would be discussed at length as part of the coverage of the interview and had taken steps to ensure context could be provided during the discussions. Despite strong opinions expressed during the program, in Ofcom's view any potential offense was justified by the context and the comments and discussions about race and racism were not in breach of Rule 2.3 of the Code. A further 6,480 people complained about the original Oprah interview. On Wednesday, Ofcom said it would not investigate those complaints. In our view, the interview was clearly presented as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's personal testimony, which would be open to viewer interpretation, a statement said. Also on Wednesday, Ofcom rejected more than 36,000 complaints about the latest series of ITV2's Love Island, including almost 25,000 about Faye's behavior towards Teddy. We assessed a high number of complaints from viewers who were troubled by a contestant's behavior and language. An Ofcom spokeswoman said. Although we recognize that emotionally charged confrontation between couples can make for uncomfortable viewing, we consider the scenes were within viewers' likely expectations of this program's established format. We also took into account that the program showed other contestants supporting Teddy, and that Faye resolved to apologize for her actions. Piers Morgan today assured fans he would be back on TV soon as he accused the left-wing Guardian of failing to properly cover his Ofcom win over Meghan Markle to protect the under-fire boss of ITV, who was once the newspaper's chief executive. The journalist was embraced by a group of women as he visited a Kensington cafe this morning and revealed that he plans to return to British screens having received a flurry of new job offers after he was cleared by Britain's broadcasting watchdog. Piers tweeted, Great to meet my Yorkshire fan club this morning. Thanks for all the support, ladies, and don't worry, I'll be back on TV soon. Mr Morgan left Good Morning Britain in March for saying he didn't believe a word of what Ms Markle told Oprah Winfrey about claims the royal family was racist towards Archie and ignored her cries for help when suicidal and pregnant. ITV's boss Dame Carolyn McCall ordered him to apologize saying publicly that she believed Meghan, with Mr Morgan resigning as GMB host saying he wouldn't say sorry for an honestly held opinion about that diatribe of bilge that she came out. Left-leaning former Guardian chief Dame Carolyn remains under pressure to explain why she forced him out in March hours after the Duchess of Sussex complained to her directly and allegedly demanded his head on a plate and implored action as both are women and mothers, Mr Morgan said in his latest Mail Online column. The Guardian has a press freedom section of its website and has campaigned for the protection of free speech and journalism in China, Russia, Afghanistan and many other countries, with 13 articles on the subject in the past month. But it only wrote one story covering Ofcom's unequivocal backing of Mr Morgan's right to free speech, with the watchdog declaring attempts to silence him amounted to a chilling restriction on freedom of expression after he was forced out at GMB over the episode. Piers tweeted a 2017 Press Gazette article announcing Dame Carolyn's appointment as ITV CEO and prominently citing her previous job as chief executive of the Guardian Media Group. He said pointedly, deafening silence from the at Guardian and all its fearless, highly opinionated, press freedom fighting columnists since my at Ofcom triumph over Princess Pinocchio and Prince Privacy. I wonder why that is? In response a Guardian spokesman told Mail Online, The Guardian reported on Ofcom's ruling. It came after Mr Morgan sat feet behind ITV executive Kevin Ligo in the stands at the cricket last week amid claims Mr Ligo was fighting to bring him back to GMB. Mr Morgan watched the cricket match from the same corporate box at the Oval in London as Mr Ligo, the man in charge of programming at the channel, just two days after the former Good Morning Britain host was cleared by Ofcom over his criticism of Meghan Markle. The 56-year-old former GMB presenter was watching England v India on day two of the fourth test after teasing earlier this week that he is open to having his old job back. It follows claims from insiders that Mr. Ligo is a big fan of Mr. Morgan.
The 63-year-old, who is ITV's managing director of media and entertainment, was sat one row in front of Mr. Morgan, and their appearance together could fuel rumors about the presenter returning. But one person who wasn't in the box with them was ITV boss Dame Carolyn who has faced pressure this week to explain why she tried to suppress Mr. Morgan's free speech after Meghan complained to her directly. An ITV source has told Mail Online that the network has no current plans to invite Mr. Morgan back to present Good Morning Britain, but he will continue to work with him on his Life Stories interview programs. His wife Celia Walden told GMB this week that her husband has some irons in the fire and won't be kicking around the house for much longer. Mr. Morgan was cleared by the media watchdog on Wednesday of any wrongdoing after he questioned Meghan Markle's claims over her mental health following her interview with Oprah Winfrey in March. And it emerged that Mr. Morgan's ex-colleagues now want him reinstated as co-host alongside Susanna Reid, 50, to boost ratings, as the ITV morning show has lost nearly a third of its viewers since he left in March. A show source told Mail Online, there is a growing movement among staff bidding for peers to return. GMB really hasn't been the same without him and now he's been cleared by Ofcom, they feel there's no reason why he can't be reunited with Susanna. They appreciate bosses won't enjoy making a U-turn but it will be for the good of the show, which to put it bluntly, is in need of saving. They should swallow their pride and do the right thing for GMB. Mr. Morgan jokingly asked do I get my job back? In a tweet posted shortly after the Ofcom ruling was announced, which he described as a resounding victory for free speech and a resounding defeat for Princess Pinocchio's. But Mr. Morgan later added, I put that post on social media asking if I'd get my job back to prove a point. I wouldn't go back, not without a public apology and I'm not going to get one. I've got much bigger things coming up. The future is exciting. The next project is global, it's big. I can't say what but people are going to hear about it within the next few weeks. And it was also reported this week that Mr. Ligo had no plans to rehire Mr. Morgan, with a senior GMB source telling The Sun, the bosses know they need to give the show an entire refresh and will do so in the next couple of months. That's not going to involve Piers though, the chances of him returning are slim to zero. Kevin is a big fan and has always said so, but he's fighting a losing battle internally sadly. The media regulator cleared ITV and Mr. Morgan after receiving a record 58,000 complaints on the back of his comments about Meghan the morning after her interview with Oprah was broadcast in the UK. During her chat with the US talk show Queen, the Duchess alleged her mental health became so bad she didn't want to be alive anymore and she did not receive the help she asked for from Buckingham Palace. Plus, she also claimed that an unnamed member of the royal family had queried how dark her son Archie's skin might be. The Duchess also filed a complaint herself with Ofcom and ITV in response to Mr. Morgan's tirade when the outspoken host said he didn't believe a word she said and that he wouldn't believe it if she read me a weather report. Explaining their decision to clear Mr. Morgan's of any wrongdoing, the regulator said there was public interest in having an open and frank debate on both mental health and suicide, and race. They will have to do what they should always have had to do dash but which ingrained walkery here prevented dash and that's be able to back up what they say. Because with every day that passes they look less credible and more neurotic and desperate. Their motives look less charitable and more self-serving. And if Harry wants to know what bedlers of misinformation look like dash he just needs to look in the mirror. Like dash he just needs to look in the mirror. Like dash he just needs to look in the mirror.